see it all in the client as well. Oh, so that's true. It won't happen a, again. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's been, no it's real been suspense kind of here. It's, it's been that's a lot fine. Of what you um, they did end up banning the Anivia, by the way. Um, Stuart didn't pick a mid in the first round of picks. Oh, so spicy, spicy. Go. Okay. We're going to edit the post. We're going to change the URL. We're going to close this out. We're going to shift enter. See if that fixes it. There we go. Okay. Fantastic. And again, I am Bicer slash spooped. I am joined by literally Keegan slash happy by three. How was your day today, Keegan? It was good. I, uh, excuse me. I had like three of my private lesson students cancel lessons at the last minute, which means oh, no. I still get paid for them, but I didn't have to teach. <laughs> so, and none <laughs> of them were sick. Cause if they text me and they're like, Hey, I'm sick. I'm like, okay, here's a refund. It was just like three in a row that were like, Oh crap. I'm out of town. I forgot to tell you. And I'm like, cool. Thanks for the money, I guess. Oh, dear. <laughs> like, <laughs> so it was rad. I just got, like, an hour and a half off to go eat dinner and get paid for it. Wow. <laughs> what did you do today? Um, I worked from home, had a good time, um, walked the Corgi, and uh, played some League. Yeah, we love that. I worked yeah. from home in the summers, and every time I'm like, I really should do this during the year, too. <laughs> it's the best. It is top tier. Echo not as okay, so it looks like we've finished pro draft pick ban. We're actually going to jump into the client, and we will catch <coughs> that for you guys, for those of you tuning in just now. So not shocking to see the Malphite ban first. Um, Strut's Malphite has been pretty nutty lately. It's an easy, easy ban. Mm. Yeah, we see that Malphite ban, the Swain ban. Okay. Yeah, I don't blame one for that either. They've got multiple people on their team who would be happy to flex Swain top support or mid. So, do you think we're going to see Caitlyn banned every game today? Um, it really depends if the facility is there on... Or, sorry, the faculty is there. <laughs> confusing my f words oh dear <laughs> um if we if we have a player um who has the capability to play that caitlin i know jirachi is pretty familiar with caitlin although jirachi's style is usually more aggressive so maybe they're mm -hmm. going to pick something like a tristana or a kaisa a jinx maybe although i believe i was talking with riley earlier in the season and they said that you know they were not going to play jinx again so you know, you might just waste a ban if you try and ban uh, Jinx. But there we see it, the Caitlyn ban coming down. Yeah, not shocking. And Caitlyn's just in such a good spot last night. I mean, I subbed for Hoagie's team last night, and both games Caitlyn was just a hard, obvious carry. She's just in a good spot right now. For sure. She is that walking bedpost, and if you have an aggressive jungler or mid laner who knows how to dive her, she could be absolutely useless in the mid to late game to keep her down. So we see a Vigar ban coming from Blog. Ziggs is a little more interesting. I, I haven't been able to play with Ganwian in a while, but I don't remember Ganwian having a particularly strong Ziggs or even playing Ziggs at all. I was pretty surprised yeah. to see that. Okay, so we see the Senna ADC pick. 
from uh, Jirachi. Very spicy. Very AD heavy also, comp as well. Important to note, since we missed the pro draft, um, they're currently picking just whatever champ they're playing. But in pro draft, at this point, the Yorick had been picked. Um, and uh, Bob took that pick to mean the Ganwian hadn't picked a mid laner yet and went ahead and banned Ziggs and Anivia against him. Oh, only to no. find out the Ganwian is taking the Yorick top. <laughs> <laughs> So those were those were a couple blown bands there, and a good bait out by Ganyan. I know he likes to go for those because he's comfortable flexing mid and top pretty equally. And we see the Leona pick locked in by Mr. Matt. So we have Thresh Ophelios versus Senna Leona in the bot lane. Now we have a Diana versus Yorick in the mid, a Mumu versus Jarv the fourth in the jungle, Trundle and Echo in the top. These are some pretty stacked team comps. I like these. Yeah, I'm excited about this. I, I'm interested to see um, Trundle Top. Haven't really watched anyone play it yet. Um, I've heard Juice Man talk about it, but I haven't watched it happen, so I'm excited for that. And I'm excited for uh, Jirachi Senna, which I have also heard a lot about and haven't seen yet. <laughs> Yeah, they definitely popped off last time I watched them play. Just absolutely yeah. nutty damage. Now, the real thing with Senna is that she really spikes at two items. That's what she's going to be looking for, is that Man Immune and Duskblade of Drakthar spike. And then eventually with the souls that she's racking up, she's going to get that passive crit stack. And she's also going to get some nice damage on top of that. So looking into this uh, team comp, who do you think is the favor in this match? Bob on the right, or sorry, Bob on the left, or Blog on the right? Solely on team comp, I like Blog. I think I think Blog has a lot of tank to deal with the two real damage carries on Bob's side. You know, they've got a Diana and they've got a Philios. Everyone else is sort of like a mid-tank damage dealer. Trundle can get pretty big, but he's also fairly easy to shut down, and I know Ganwin's confident on his Yorick. Um, and I just think between Jarvan having great engage, Leona having great engage, and Echo having all kinds of get in, do damage, and get the hell out. I think they're in a fine spot to take fights when they want it without being at risk of sacrificing a ton, because, again, they have three tanks. And the only person who's super, super squishy is Echo, and Echo's disengage is some of the best in the game. So I think they have very strong engages and a safe way to stay alive in them, um, which you know, can be pretty beneficial for them. Whereas Bob has one very squishy champ in Aphelios, and Aphelios doesn't have a ton of disengage either. So if he gets picked and taken out early in a fight, they're way on the back foot after that. I agree. Um, interesting to note, I see that we have Exhaust on Jabberwock's Thresh and Ignite on Mr. Matt's Leona. Um, I'm, I'm not too sure. It, it seems to me like... At the time, you would need Exhaust on a Thresh against Blog's team comp. It's almost too late. Uh, I mean, your targets are probably Echo or Jarvan the Fourth. Senna's probably not going to be up super close so that you can use that on her. So I guess it just strikes me as an interesting choice. I think they're going to play around the mid game more with that Exhaust, uh, while Blog is going to be looking to get to the late game if they can, but maybe get some early kills off of that Ignite. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think also more TPs on log side is honestly good for them. Again, with being such an engage comp, I, I think it'll be good for them to have the ability to get around the map a little faster. Oh, I just found out someone is trying to steal my identity. That's fun. Oh, nice. <laughs> I just got an email from Discover. Oh, dear. They approved uh, $50 at GameStop, and it says, do you recognize this transaction? And I'm going to say no. I'm not at GameStop right now. Hell no. I'm in my apartment.
You don't have any like pre-orders or anything coming through? Nope. Wow. Uh, <laughs> give me two seconds while this loads in. I'm going to go check something. That's totally fine. And we got the usual contenders here. We got uh, Aftershock Amumu is pretty strong. Interesting choice in the jungle. I usually see maybe Electrocute. Um, you know, all sorts of things on Amumu in the jungle, I suppose. Uh, Conqueror Trundle Top, pretty expected. Electrocute Diana, lots of pressure there. Aftershock Thresh and press the attack, Aphelios. And we are in game. Well, are we? We'll I'll take, take the pause at do. 10 seconds, and uh, right. we can unpause whenever you're ready. I'm going to get these uh, champion champs. Let's see. Hey, look at that. First try. Selected the right scene. Okay. We've got Dark Harvest on the Senna. That's pretty typical for a Senna ADC, running that lethality spike and then later transitioning to crit items. Electrocute on the Echo, so we have two very explosive mids, but Echo is down Ignite. He has Teleport uh, to allow him to take some free roams and get back to lane fast to not lose any CS advantage there. The de double Teleport from Blog is really going to be a lot of pressure across the map especially with the Senna Ultimate and the Yorick Split Pushing capability. And just taking a look at what Bob has over here on the left, uh, with the Trundle, Amumu, and Thresh, Diana, that's just a ton of team fight. They're going to be running that Bio Ball looking for any picks that they can with that. And uh, any extended fight, really, they're, they're going to love that. Are you ready, my man? Hello? Well, we'll let him catch up later. Uh, we're going to start this thing off here. Got the nice good luck, have fun from Mr. Matt. Got a five-point ping coming down from Blog. Ganwin with the no you. We see a ping at the blue buff from Blog. Biscuit doing some invading with the Mumu, just checking, seeing who's there, seeing if he's going to get invaded on. He has no vision currently. The five points just kind of hanging out. See some vision pings going down over Pixel Brush. There is no ward there, in fact. Bit of an erroneous uh, ping on the ward. See, pretty standard leash coming from both sides on the bot side of the map. Jarvan already with that. <laughs> oh, yeah, 4 CS lead just for taking the blue buff. Just a little bit of uh, server lag there as he catches back up. Thresh looking for the hook. Aphelios laying down some damage on Senna. Got her below half health already. Jarvan fully clearing the bot side first. Mumu going buff to Gromp. And now to blue buff. Maybe looking to contest that scuttle after his blue buff. We see a flash come down from Ganwin, a flash from OG Juice Man. First blood off of the Trundle Club. 
Big fight happening mid, 1v1. Guy Fieri getting some great damage down on the Diana. We see the Ignite hit at half health from Fleeing Panda, but Guy Fieri is still pretty healthy on that Echo. But he is down a little bit of CS, chugging some pots, evening out the lane. Just ever so slight gold advantage with that first blood on the side of Bob. Got Jarvan sweeping the top side river as Amumu takes Scuttle Crab. Jarvan looking to contest that Scuttle Crab walks towards him. Bob takes their first plate in the bot lane, gets some great extra gold advantage. Jarvan engaging on the Amumu, but does not smite steal. Biscuit Hat turning back around towards the real JLP. OG Juice Man and Biscuit Hat pressuring Diana, looking for mid, just barely misses the Q, dashes in and gets the kill. With a flash, Fleeing Panda, excellent cleanup kill from the Diana Realm. Uh, no response from the Echo mid, surprisingly. Echo hunting for those kills, trying to deny any farm he can to Diana. But with that one kill, she has quite an advantage now. And she'll take the reset. Jabberwock fishing for a hook. He finds it, goes in with a double flay. Mr. Matt locking down Jabberwock. Insane damage coming down from Senna. OG Juice Man playing in the cat bundle. You see a pretty sizable CS advantage from Echo before his reset. About uh, nine minions, but Diana will definitely catch up here. Mr. Matt's checking that bush, making sure no one's going to cheese him. OG Juice Man building up a very nice double wave here in the top lane. That slow push will pay off for him, maybe in a plate. Jarvin coming up top, sensing maybe there might be gank potential. Huge trade damage coming in mid. Guy Fieri getting chunked down by Fleeing Panda with just an Amp Tome and a Mana Crystal. Fair and balanced champion, am I right? Just taking a look at our gold totals. Most of the damage, most of the gold advantage is in our top lane. Um, Hi, every I'm alive, lane by is... the way. Oh, welcome back. <laughs> welcome back. Sorry, I was calling Discover. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I figured that was the case, so I just yeah, continued on they, without um, you. Yeah, they, uh, the people um, used my credit card for like a taxi service and then bought some stuff from GameStop and Discover flagged that and put a hold on the account. And so they tried to buy stuff from Best Buy, and that also didn't work. Oh, Pandas. Yep, I'm going to let this happen. This is way more important than my story. <laughs> oh my god, does Panda get out of this? Does he seriously get out of this? Beautiful what? play by Panda with the dash back, <laughs> throws the cue, gets away. You hate to see that. Dude, that That's was actually chat, guys. nutty. OG Juice actually... Man taking his first plate in the top lane, and he'll get a second. Maybe? No? Okay. Discretion is the better part of Valor. B.O.B. Yeah. picks up the first <laughs> Infernal Dragon. Yeah, so long story short, they cut it before uh, any actual charges happened. So oh, that's good. <laughs> no harm, no foul. Well, minor foul. <laughs> My, well, you know, illegal foul, but I'm not going to owe anyone money for it. <laughs> yeah. I'm at 738, 739, 740. Same. I'm right awesome. with you. Awesome. Mr. Matt with a huge Zenith Blade comes in the bot lane. 
ults the Aphelios, ignites, but he gets away with just the skin of his teeth. Huge damage from Senna. That, those Dark Harvest stacks are starting to add up, I would imagine. 14 stacks already at 8 minutes. Seems good on uh, Senna's Ghosts. Everything's good on Senna. Oh, sorry. <laughs> one one Dark Harvest stack on Senna. So not, not a huge lead so far with the Dark Harvest, but the longer the game goes on, the more damage the Senna will do. Echo looking for the roam on the bot lane. Dashes into Fleeing Panda looking to clean up the kill. And he just walks away. Sorry, did you want to do color or play-by-play? -play? I can scoot um, over to whichever. I usually do color. I'm fine okay. with color. Perfect. Another huge Zenith Blade from Mr. Matt coming in. See a Senna Ultimate, a Jarvan Rake. Sorry, that was a Thresh Flay. Uh, Jarvan just doing flag and drag, showing up, saying hi. Yeah. Jabberwock has been just on point with these lanterns. I mean, that's two fights in a row where his lantern has been the difference between another death or not. And honestly, yeah. there, if Senna had... Or, sorry, if Aphelios had backed off a little more I, I think he could have gotten out of that um possibly at the loss of thresh but either way a really really good lantern from jabberwock to follow up on the really good diana lantern earlier yeah <laughs> Let's see a mumu shadowing bot looking for a possible pick bot taking the reset if possible will he blind q into the bush no, okay. Very smart move. Zenith played in for Mr. Matt. We see the Q stun come down. Biscuit Hat narrowly avoiding the flay and the hook. Wait, <laughs> wrong team. <laughs> <laughs> Failed gank. They, <laughs> the Amumu clears out. I was like, wow, he missed that flay and the hook on the Amumu? <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> you got it. They're only red and blue for your convenience. <laughs> yeah, I'll say. <laughs> uh, red team coming in top lane. <laughs> With a scary red cat. <laughs> Blue, Blue ogre runs away. <laughs> Excellent binding landed oh, by Jirachi. Range on that. Holy moly. It's pretty balanced. <laughs> it's just every time you think it's at max yeah. range, it goes another like second. You're like, oh. Mm. Uh, it's a butt clencher for sure. OG Juice Man getting chunked out by Ganwe and flashing out. Biscuit Hat coming up to support, but not a lot he can do there. Jarvan shadowing top, possibly looking for a play on Biscuit. Smart move by the real JLP to prevent Biscuit Hat from making any big plays. Echo roaming up to top, looking for possible plays. Diana following. She is scary. Although we do have a 30 CS lead in the mid lane. For Echo. Jirachi farming souls. Politely. Ult coming in from Mr. Matt. Missed Zenith Blade, unfortunately. Not able to follow up. Jirachi is out of mana. Scary time to go in for her. And unfortunately, a lot of Senna's damage is within her abilities. Yeah, absolutely. That's one interesting thing about taking her AD is she's extremely... Ability focus and a lot of her burst comes from her ability. Oh, coming in from really fresh, a good flay hook. into the Amumu ultimate and 
PMP MKY Pimp Monkey. Is that how you pronounce it? Pimp Monkey, yeah. Pimp Monkey uh, with the turret and uh, the uh, rapid fire life steely weapon. I mean, Jabberwock <laughs> is just a monster this game. For He's sure. just playing everything really, really clean. But no, what I was going to say is, um, that's an interesting thing about Senna as an AD, and why I think, you know, we've seen a lot of games where Senna support has all of a sudden become a carry late game, because she has so much... See, teleport coming down mid lane from Guy Fieri. Maintaining his CS advantage over Diana. Oh, goodness. I feel like I'm trying to, like, catch up and get back into what's happening here. Um, <laughs> not a super significant gold lead. I mean, a gold lead. But not as massive as you would expect with 5-1 and 2 dragons. Just by virtue of the CS, you know, I mean, Ganween's ahead in his lane, Guy Fieri's ahead in his lane, Drachi's slightly ahead in their lane. So, although the kills and the dragons tell one story, the CS is making it still a game that can be, you know, come back from. And still a game that I think can be won by Log. Yeah, I think the big, uh, big person they need to play around is their junglers. <laughs> Seems yeah. like a Mumu can set up really good plays for bot lane, really good plays for mid lane. Top lane is kind of just a wet noodle fight until 30 minutes anyway. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> but I definitely think Echo's starting to inch out an advantage, um, even not having a kill on him yet or an assist. Um, and you can see he's roaming. Uh, he ulted out of that dragon pit safely and was able to escape. Jarvan jumping the wall up by Rift Herald, looking for the steel biscuit hat, smiting early for the health. Rift Herald going to Bob with a nice roam up from Diana. We see Nefelio's ulti, Thresh going in, flashing for the Senna ultimate, flaying. Ophelio has taken too much frontline damage and ignite from Leona. Kill secured, Zenith Blade by Mr. Matt, and a double kill for Jirachi. That was an excellent play by them. That was just a really good call for them. As soon as you see that that Rift Herald goes down, you know Amumu's top side. You know you have a chance to start shoving your lane and trying to be aggressive. Huge crate so from the see... regel. P <laughs> boxes in the Diana, but she manages to escape with turret pressure and ignites the Echo in the process. Yeah, it's always hard to uh, it's always hard to color when things start becoming a clown fiesta. <laughs> you get about halfway through an idea yeah. and there's another fight. <laughs> For sure. That was exciting, though. And exactly like I was saying, now all of a sudden that nearly 2K gold difference is only half, only 500. You know, we very quickly are starting to see Blog gain back that gold difference and start evening the game out. Yeah, some costly mistakes on the side of Bob for sure. We see Rift Herald get dropped down mid. Not sure that's going to take the turret, but I think he's just looking mm. for some pressure. Uh, no yeah, current objectives on the map. And I don't have objective timers, so I don't know when Dragon's up. Uh, I believe if you uh, click the eyeball at the bottom left of the screen, the bottom one is objective timers and should show up on the right-hand oh. side. Sorry. Heck yeah, now I, I know how to Greg do that. I saw Greg do that, and I've been meaning to you do that, that every stream since. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, there's a dragon up in a minute. So, <laughs> so honestly, a little early on the rift. I, I would have liked to hold on to it until dragon's up so you can force some pressure elsewhere during the inevitable dragon fight. Yeah, I'm not sure if that was a communication issue. It definitely wasn't a timer issue. Uh, they had oh, taken that recently. Ophelia was getting the shutdown on Ganwe, and J4 jumping in looking for a pick. We see a gigantic Ophelia's turret just chunking, chunking, chunking. Who will take it down? Thresh flaying out, protecting his Ophelios. Jirachi looking for the pick. They have four members there against two. And they're backing if... away. We see a teleport coming in from OG Juice Man. What is going on? It's if the Bob ARAM you signed game up for. And Thresh doesn't get MVP, I will be furious. 
<laughs> Jabberwocky is playing Mr. His Matt with a Zenith Blade onto OG Juice Man. They clean him up with Jirachi. Nice. Jabberwock with an excellent hook onto Echo. They'll get out clean. I just... I I think I have a crush on Jabberwocky's Thresh. I can't <laughs> get over how clean he's playing. This man's playing out of his mind. Yeah. I mean, he's just landing everything. <laughs> Again, I mean, the 1v1 tussle against Biscuit Hat. Which noodle would, will come out alive the <laughs> west? Which wet noodle wins? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Matt with an excellent root on the Thresh. Guy Fieri cleaning up the kill with that Q. Uh, I texted my family group chat and said somebody tried to steal my identity, and my sister said they really should pick someone with money. Oh, Wow. She's not wrong. Savage. Savage. And that's a gold lead now. I mean, that's a gold lead for Blog. Yeah. Like, you know, I think we were saying as the game was loading in that Blog had the better team fight comp and looked better in team fights. And I think Bob's whole game plan to avoid that was to get ahead in laning phase. And while they did a good job of that, I think they let the game go to team fight a little earlier than they would have liked. I think Bob needed to keep trying to force pressure into side lanes and try to keep the game in lane phase as long as possible. And I think they were a little too ready to start NA ramming against a team that wants to A ram. I agree, and maybe it, it could just be a ward positioning thing. I mean, if you look at their vision score comparatively to blogs, um, Bob has the vision advantage and has had it the whole match. Um, so you got to wonder, are there wards in the right place um, to give them the vision they need to make those plays, or maybe it's just a communication thing? Cat attack on fleeing panda. Meow, 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 meow. <laughs> oh, excuse me. OG Juice Man with a big play on Ganwian. Ganwian getting a Mumu ulted and <laughs> Diana ulted. I bet he feels like the prettiest girl in school. Meanwhile, Blog shoves down the mid lane with four. Crashes that yeah. wave. Will they have enough damage to take it out? That honestly might have been worth it. Um, depending on how this fight goes, of course, this fight is... Huge Echo, <laughs> Echo E, and uh, Senna ultimate across the board. Lots of damage coming down from Blog, but Bob is here and they're ready to fight. There's no ultimates available for them to use. Yeah, if that fight had gone more in favor of Blog, which I think theoretically it could have, they were a little trigger happy. Um... That could have been a great play for Ganwin to sacrifice himself for a turret, but now with Bob, you know, taking the one for one and forcing everyone else to back off, all of a sudden, you know, it, it was maybe a neutral play, maybe in favor of Bob. Yeah, it seemed like a but timing issue. Like that are tough. With uh, the team just needed to kind of wait for uh, Ganwin to get that pressure. Ganwin needed to wait for the team to meet the turret. Mm -hmm. um, if you if parallel pushing is very very strong in league. Yes, but it's also very risky. <laughs> yeah. You know, if, if it goes well, it's so strong, but you got to time it correctly, and you have to really trust your team to do their part of the job. Can we just, just sitting through. in the bush? Pingin goes this, for the slow. Is, okay, thank you. The I'm like, why collapses. is the directed camera showing me this? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> There's so the much happening mid. Like, you and really it's like, need to see Stuart stand nope, in a bush. Yorick catching out a trundle with his team. <laughs> It's really Meanwhile, good response. We a kill. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, really good response on the good. behalf of uh, Blog to get that catch out on the Trundle. Um, their their split push is a lot better, I think, with the Yorick than it is with the Trundle. Here we're gonna see Yorick taking down that turret, tanking the ever loving crap out of it. Another turret to Blog.
Just to take a look at uh, gold right now, it seems like Senna has pulled ahead in the gold advantage of the bot lane. Guy Fieri with a gigantic play. Pimp Monkey with a huge ult hitting everyone. Senna ultimate hitting everyone. Biscuit Hat pouring his heart and soul into the team fight, blowing his ultimate, but not a kill for him. I think it's appropriate to say you hate to see that. You really do. And I think that just came down to not respecting Echo. <laughs> like, yeah, it, it was such a classic. They put so much damage on Echo, focused so much on Echo, and then all of a sudden Echo's full health again. <laughs> yeah, and, and Echo mid with a 30 CS lead and a 350 gold bounty. It makes him a ult. very prime target uh, to <laughs> take down. And it looks like this might turn into another log dragon. I mean, Amumu just came up. I don't think he gets there in time. So unless we get a Pimp Monkey or a Diana Steel. Yeah, it seems like they're setting up for a team fight here. Guy Fieri jumping in on the Diana. Excellent. Stun. Fleeing Panda yeah, just a little caught out. Flashes away. Stun. Another escape by Fleeing Panda. Can anyone kill this guy? Yeah, and, I mean, someone <laughs> oh did at God. some point, but... Yeah. <laughs> So they got what they wanted there. Not a long know. enough timeline, I suppose. They get the dragon, but wild that they didn't get that Diana kill. I mean, Diana is so slippery. It helps, to be fair, that it's Panda. <laughs> <laughs> and it Very also true. helps that they have a ton of CC elsewhere on their team. You know, so Diana's slippery as it is, but when you couple that with a Mumu CC, Trundle CC, Thresh CC, slows from Aphelios, like, everybody can help her escape, so, not shocking. Oh, God, I hope this turns into the clown fiesta that I think it's going to be. It's like everyone running Mr. toward the bottom Matt. of the jungle. Holy cow, it's a 1v4 in the jungle, but Senna's here to help. With some damage, <laughs> but they get the shutdown on uh, the Echo. Uh, yeah. Trundle gets killed in the bot lane by the Leona Yorick. Good lockdown. Yeah, Maybe looking for a little, reset Baron play. A little bit of guy getting a little big for his britches there. You know, after surviving that last fight, taking the dragon, team starting to push ahead, it's easy to feel safe, but... You're Echo without ult, and you don't know where their team is. You can't be alone in their jungle. and It's an easy mistake to make when your team's pulling ahead. You know, you start to feel yeah. unstoppable. Sometimes you don't have to force a play at all. Sometimes you yeah. just stay with the team, and uh, the plays will naturally happen around the objectives. But I think Blog is definitely in the position that they want to be in. Slight gold advantage, but they're creeping in with those dragons and their ocean drakes every one. Paired with the Senna healing, that's going to make them near unkillable in extended fights. I'll actually be right back. I need to step away for just a sec. No worries. I will do play-by-play -play for the first time, I guess. <laughs> Even before nothing happens during the time I'm waiting to play-by-play. -play. <laughs> it's going to be dead air. Yeah, it seems like everyone's just sort of splitting into lanes. We got a 1-3-1 one, one from... Excuse me, I really need to burp. Oh, but Gamwing going in on Diana, and Diana's been pretty slippery, but you can only slip so much against Yorick. Meanwhile, another fight breaks out top. Guy Fieri going in on Trundle. A great ult again from Echo means Juice Man has to immediately start running away. I think he's not going to clinch the kill, but enough pressure to push that Trundle off. Ultimately, though, the you know, the problem with that is Echo burned ult for that fight. So as much as he had a better fight, Trundle getting out of that means Trundle wins the fight, even though it's a worse fight for him to take. Um, but it's not like Guy Fieri has an exceptionally long cooldown on his ult. As you can see, it's already about 75% of the way off cooldown. <laughs> so no harm, no foul. Holy moly. Biscuit oh deleting Guy Fieri. But 75% doesn't let you use the ult. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if only. <laughs> There's so a time close. joke in there somewhere, I'm sure. <laughs> there, there is. 
How can anyone stop Ganwe in the Bramble Vest now? Interesting call with just the Aphelios. I suppose Trundle uh, would also get hurt by a Bramble Vest. Senna fishing for a kill with her ultimate. And we're seeing all the makings of pressure for a Baron play from Blog. Um, but they're just kind of backing it up. Oh, Zenith played from Matt in a stun on Jabberwock. And a nice root from Senna, but no one there to follow up with damage. Pimp Monkey gets away with a lantern. Y'all don't need to hear me talk again about how good Jabberwock's lanterns are. So just <laughs> just imagine I said the same thing again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it looks like uh, Log's starting to set up around Baron, which is an interesting call, but honestly, I kind of like it. I like forcing it. They have a small gold advantage. Double Ocean is just good. <laughs> it's yeah, just they do have the good. 5v4 set up against uh, Bob. Bob does have the teleport on OG Juice Man. We see the teleport come down from Ganwe and go into the top lane. Huge Echo E coming in, deletes God, Aphelios that's... on the back line. You hate to see that. Leona coming in, nice Flay Biscuit Hat trapped inside the J4 ult with that Flay. See some smites go down. Guy Fieri get the cleanup kill yeah. on Biscuit Hat. Fleeing Panda, will he get out? And that's that's it's exactly what you have to do. Everywhere. That's exactly what we talked about, the cross map base. It's exactly what we talked about in Champ Select. <laughs> The, the play is to get in that back line, kill Lephelios, and all of a sudden they have nothing left. And yeah. that's exactly what we just saw happen. You know, Echo jumped straight to the back line, melted the Aphelios, and all of a sudden it's not really a fight anymore. You know, looking at the comps, I actually think that the Diana might have not been the pick. I'm not sure if Diana was counterpicked um, by the Echo or by the team comp on blog, but it seems like Diana just doesn't seem to have the tools to deal with a lot of bruisers. She wants those squishy yeah. targets like Senna, but beyond that, there's not really a great target on blog for uh, Diana to peel. Echo backing on a ward. Bob just running straight to Baron. Seems like Blog is electing for the super late game with that third dragon. Oh. I mean, four ocean is just nutty. I think as it stands, there is definitely potential for Bob to come back in this game. But I'm going to ask my very favorite question. What do you think they need to do to make that happen? <laughs> um... Honestly, I think they need to fight as five. I think the Trundle split is really hurting them in team fights. I think Trundle brings a lot to the team um, as far as like creating that buffer and then just running for the Senna. So as soon as Mr. Matt goes in on the Zenith Blade, they pull back in the fight, pick off the Leona, and then run back in. It's a 4v5. That was a <laughs> cheeky Senna ult. That was really... That's... The kind yeah. of shit Jirachi lives for. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, I mean, I think we're seeing proof of what you just said. You know, <laughs> the split pushes are hurting them. Also, yeah. he has two deaths on split push. Right, and right. There. And you talk about, like, where is Bob's power? It's in the fact that, as a team, they have a lot of lockdown. Um, Blog has the benefit of a Yorick split push, where Bob has to kind of all commit to the Yorick kill or fight as a team somewhere else. Um, create that pressure. But that's a very simplified, like, what to do. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. there's a lot of subtlety to what's going on. Of course. Oh, and the just max range hook whiff from uh, Jabberwock had to happen. Big ultimate coming down from Pimp Monkey. Big Leona ultimate. We see real, real JLP ult as well. Echo coming to join the fight a little bit late. Gets in good damage. Ults away. Excellent hook by Jabberwock. Flay Senna. Hey, look. They did what I said. <laughs> 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 
think their ears were ringing. <laughs> They're like, oh, that's what we need to do. They're like, oh, he's got a point. Yeah. <laughs> this man might be on to something. Because it would seem like yeah. Diana should have the damage to get in the back line and take care of Senna, but it, it really has to be a 5v5 in order for her to have that distraction to get back there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think we're, you know, we're seeing this game at a point now where Log has definitely come back pretty significantly, but it's in a position where Bob could still come back and could still take it. It's uh... Yeah, it's it, past the 30-minute mark. Those mistakes start to amplify where, you know, one ADC catch out is 50 seconds. You're, you're looking at just like a long time without primary damage source. Big Senna ult coming in. Jabberwock flashing out. We see a flash from Ganwi and trying to get out of the fight. Guy Fieri hunting for those kills on the back line. Has he played, sorry, flag and drag from Real JLP. He flashes out as well. Ganwi and Real JLP cleaning up the trundle on the back line. Guy Fieri doing work on the front. Can they get to fleeing Panda? That is a question of the night. Big redemption coming down from Mr. Matt. Good healing across the board. This might smell, spell doom for Bob. Biscuit Hat getting peeled off by the Jarvan Ultimate. Fleeing Panda sprinting, sprinting, sprinting. Dark Harvest stack and Kitty Cats from Yorick. Spell yeah, demise. And I think after that fight, they no longer can. I, I had a vested interest in believing that this was uh, fixable, but I think they end off of this. I mean, death timers are long. One Nexus turret's already dead. Yeah, that was a very bad place yeah, to <laughs> fight, and, uh, you know, Log played it very extremely game, well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they really absolutely. got their Senna ahead, and they played around her, and just the range that Senna provides, uh, I think, was pretty dangerous. Ban Jirachi Senna, like, immediately. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, you know, Bob played early game really, really well, and I think um, individual players had really good games, for sure. I think the transition to mid-game hurt them, and they didn't realize quickly enough that they were falling behind i think they still had a little bit of that oh we were ahead in the early game so we can keep fighting and keep being the aggressor after mm -hmm. a point where they were definitely losing team fights and you know if you lose two team fights and then think you can take the third one it's always tempting <laughs> but losing that third one is what really sets you behind and, you know, For sure. it's easy to do yeah, and it was a close game, too. I mean, we're talking a 5,000 gold difference. It's all about who you have the gold on, who's your advantage, and who you're playing around. But we're going to break Absolutely. the VOD here quickly uh, just for VOD purposes. But we're going to get the next thing a-rolling. BRB. <laughs> 